Good morning and welcome to the Lebanon Rock Church online worship service for this Mother's Day, Sunday, May the 9th, 2021. I'm Pastor Matt Skiles and we welcome you to this online gathering and we also want to take a moment this morning and honor all of our mothers and our moms from wherever they are joining us from. We honor you today and we wish you all a very happy and healthy and blessed Mother's Day for this year of 2021. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer and invite the presence of the Lord in. I encourage you to take your burdens, your cares, and your needs to the Lord at this time. And let's ask God to bless our service and our time of worship together and also to bless the message that is forthcoming. So join with me as we ask God to bless our service this morning. Heavenly Father, we come to you today in the name of Jesus Christ. And Father, we thank you for this very special Mother's Day Sunday. Father, we honor all of our moms today. We thank you for each one of these wonderful women, the families and households that they represent. We ask that you'll bless them today, bless their families. Lord, we pray that you'll strengthen and encourage and comfort those that are, are no longer able to spend this day with their mom because they're no longer with us. We just pray, God, that you'll strengthen and encourage those families as well today. Father, we lift up our burdens, our cares, and our needs to you today. We pray that you'll heal those that are sick and afflicted and those that are in the hospital. We ask, Lord, that you'll minister to the material and financial needs that we have. And Father, we ask that you'll give us victory, God, in the spiritual needs that we have as well. And we ask your blessings upon this service, anoint the ministry of the word, and anoint our time of worship and song. And bless the remainder of the service today, we pray in Jesus' name. This time we're going to enter into worship and song, and then I'll be coming back momentarily with a very special Mother's Day message for today.
Praise the Lord and God be praised. If you have your Bibles, your tablets, your smartphone, whatever your Bible app is that you're using for today, turn with me to two passages of Scripture this morning. Turn to Proverbs chapter 31 and find verse number 29, and then also find Luke chapter 2 and verse number 1. And we're going to be sharing a message this morning entitled, What Makes a Godly Mother? What Makes a Godly Mother? And I want to take a moment this morning and share with you that this will be a Mother's Day theme message, but I think it can apply to all of us as Christian believers uh, for what we're going to share in the theme of the message today. So Proverbs chapter 31, verses 29 and 30. And then we're going to read Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 7. And of course, this is going to deal with the theme and the topic of godly mothers and motherhood in general. So in Proverbs chapter 31, very well-known chapter in the Word of God, it is called uh, the book of Proverbs, the book of wisdom. And Proverbs 31 describes a godly woman. And uh, I love the way it describes the Proverbs 31 woman. So we're going to look here at the last uh, two portions of scripture here in Proverbs chapter 31. And it reads, starting at verse number 29. Many daughters have done well, but you excel them all. Charm is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman who fears the Lord, she shall be praised. Luke chapter 2 verses 1 through 7 is our next verse of scripture. This is the story of Mary, the mother of Jesus. It says that it came to pass in those days that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This census first took place while Quirinius was governing Syria. So all went to be registered, everyone to his own city. Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed wife, who was with child. So it was that while they were there, the days were completed for her to be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling cloths and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. Let us pray together over this message this morning. Heavenly Father, we ask that you'll give your word free course in the hearts and minds of those that hear this message today. Anoint the message and the messenger with the anointing of the Holy Spirit. We ask that you will just forgive us of our sins and cover us in the blood of Jesus Christ. And Lord, just forgive us of our sins as we forgive those who sin and trespass against us. And bless the remainder of this service and all those that hear this message. And Lord, we ask your blessings upon all of our mothers today as well. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now I submit to you that giving birth does not make a woman a mother. It takes a special woman to be a mother. A mother is a person who is willing to take the responsibility of investing her life into another human being who is totally dependent upon her to do so. We are living in a culture today where parenthood is under attack and one thing that needs to remain stable and remains uh, uh, constantly in flux is the institution of motherhood. Moms uh, carry a wide range of responsibilities and they have so much that they have to do, raising children, many of them working to support a family or to help with a family household income, uh, taking care of the needs day to day of their children and running a household. But I submit to you that the greatest role of, of, of a, a mother is that of a servant of God. And I'm thankful for all of the godly mothers that are out there. We talk about what it takes and what makes a godly mother. It's not just giving birth to a child that makes a woman a mom. Just like fathering a child doesn't make a man a dad. You see, motherhood is a great, great, great responsibility and a great challenge. And it is one that God has, has ordained for the family. We need godly mothers more than ever in our day and age and in this culture in which we live. Abraham Lincoln once said these words, no man is poor who has had a godly mother. And I agree with 
President Abraham Lincoln's sentiments there. No man is poor who has had a godly mother. We need godly mothers in this day and age, and we need godly mothers in the body of Christ because the enemy is seeking to destroy the institution of the family. And if he can do that, then he's going to be able to destroy the institution of the church. So we need godly mothers, and we need women and men both that would be godly examples to their children, to their grandchildren, and to their family. But what makes a godly mother? Because I assure you that if any child, a son or a daughter, comes to the knowledge and understanding of God and the knowledge of salvation in Jesus Christ, more than likely it is a praying mother, a godly mother that has helped to mold and shape and train that child into who he or she needed to be. Godly fathers are important and they should be the priests of their home and the head of their household and should be setting an example. But unfortunately in our day and age, we see where there are a lot of single parent homes and single moms that are raising kids and doing the best they can to raise their children to know the Lord. We need godly mothers and we need them to step forward and take their rightful place as women of God and as servants of God within the body of Christ. So what makes a godly mother? What makes a godly mother? Well, the first thing necessary to become a godly mother is to have a personal relationship with God. The Apostle Paul brought this to the remembrance of Timothy in his, in his letter in 2 Timothy 1, verses 3, 4, and 5. He reminded Timothy of not only his salvation and faith in God, but how it had been passed down to him from godly examples with his mother and grandmother. And he calls, these, the, he calls this to his remembrance when he says in 2 Timothy 1, 3, 4, 5, I thank God whom I serve with a pure conscience as my forefathers did. As without ceasing, I remember you in my prayers night and day, greatly desiring to see you, being mindful of your tears, that I may be filled with joy. When I call to remembrance the genuine faith that is in you, which dwelt first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and I am persuaded is in you also. You see, a, a godly mother has a relationship with God and a relationship with Jesus Christ. She has understood that it is a life of faith and salvation and faith in Christ that is going to enable her to be an example to her children. When Ulysses S. Grant's mother died in Jersey City in 1883, he said to the minister who was to officiate his mother's funeral service, make no reference to me. She owed nothing to me, to any post I have occupied, or any honors that have been paid me. Speak of her just as she was, a pure-minded, simple-hearted, earnest, Methodist Christian. Ulysses S. Grant wanted his mother's Christianity and her salvation and her faith in Christ to be noted at her funeral. Not the, not the fact that she raised the President of the United States and a great military hero in Ulysses S. Grant. He wanted the focus to be on her faith and the love of the Lord that she had. Just like the Apostle Paul was reminded of the salvation that first was in Lois and then was in Eunice and then was in Eunice's son, Timothy. A godly mother has a relationship with God. The mother of Jesus, Mary, she was a woman of spiritual integrity. In Luke 1 and 30, the Bible tells us, the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Mary was also a woman who enjoyed the presence of God. In Luke chapter 1, verse 46 and 47, when this angel, the Lord, visited her and told her she was going to bring forth a son and give birth to the Son of God and name him Jesus, in Luke 1, 46 and 47, we read, And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit has rejoiced in God, my Savior. And Mary was also a woman who was hungry for God. In Acts chapter 1 and verse 14, she was in the company of the early church disciples that went into the upper room. In Acts chapter 1 and verse 14, after Jesus has ascended back to the right hand of the Father, 
The disciples and the men and women that followed them go into the upper room in Jerusalem. And in Acts 1 and 14, it said, These all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. And in Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 4, Mary was in that company that was not only baptized in the Holy Spirit, but also spoke with other tongues as the Spirit gave her utterance and gave the 120 utterance. That's why it says uh, in Acts 2, 1 to 4, that the day of Pentecost was fully come. They were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as a fire and set upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Mary had a hunger for God. She had a, a, she had a desire to know God. She knew what it was to be in the presence of God. And she knew what it was to walk holy in spiritual integrity. A godly mother has a relationship with God walks with God, spends time in prayer in the presence of God and knows what the word of God says and how she is to follow out and live her life according to the word of God. Uh, the first thing that's necessary for a woman of God to become a godly mother is that personal relationship with God and Jesus Christ. The second thing that makes a, 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 a godly mother is she has a proper relationship with her family. You know, Mary supported her husband Joseph's leadership. In Matthew chapter 2, verses 13 and 14, the Bible tells us after Jesus had been born. Now, when they had departed, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise, take the young child and his mother. Flee to Egypt and stay there until I bring you word. For Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. When he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night and departed for Egypt. And in Matthew chapter 2, verses 19 to 22, 23, it says, But when Herod was dead, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt, saying, Arise, take the young child and his mother, and go to the land of Israel. For those who sought the young child's life are dead. Then he arose, took the young child and his mother, and came into the land of Israel. Not only did Mary follow Joseph into Egypt when he went, but then when he came back and settled in Israel in the, in the region of Nazareth, that is what Mary did. She supported and followed her husband. You see that a, a godly mother has a proper relationship with her family. Not only that, Mary taught her children uh, the discipline and to honor God. In Luke chapter 2, verses 51 to 52, it says, Then he went down with them and came to Nazareth as was sub and was subject to them. But his mother kept all these things in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and men. They had found Jesus teaching and talking and conversing with the teachers of the law in the temple and they had not only that but also had had seen how God had used her young 12 year old son and she pondered all these things in her heart but you see she was teaching her children the discipline of honoring God that's why Proverbs 22 and 6 says train up a child in a way he should go and when he is old he will not depart from it if your children don't honor and obey you, whom they can see, then how will they learn to obey God who they cannot see? We have to teach them as parents. Mothers have to do that. That's why moms are so instrumental in the spiritual growth and life of their children. They pray for their children. Fathers have the responsibility of being the spiritual head of their home and the priest of their home, but it is usually Usually a responsibility, unfortunately, that falls to many women, and they have to be a godly example for their children. And a godly mother has a good relationship and a proper relationship with her children and with her family. Mary was faithful to her children. She loved her son, Jesus. 
her firstborn. In fact, she loved him so much that she followed him all the way to the cross. The Bible says in John 19 and 25, Now there stood by the cross of Jesus his mother, and his mother's sister Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. She followed her firstborn son, Jesus, all the way to the cross. That wasn't easy, but Mary loved her children, and she was faithful to her children. She was faithful to her husband and followed his leadership. She taught her children discipline and how to honor God, and she was faithful to her children and loved them. Dr. G. Campbell Morgan had four sons, and all of them were preachers. Someone once came into the drawing room when all the family was there, and they thought they would see what Howard, one of the sons, was made of, and they asked him this question, Howard, who is the greatest preacher in your family? Howard had great admiration for his father, and he looked straight across at him, and without a moment's hesitation, he answered, Mother. <laughs> The great G. Campbell Morgan and his four sons who were all preachers, when one of them was asked, who's the greatest preacher in your family? The son said, mother. There's something about moms. They know how to teach and instill the truth of God's word and the goodness of God and the things of God into their children. So we looked at how the first thing necessary for a woman to become a godly mother is a personal relationship with the Lord. The second necessary ingredient uh, for being a godly mother is a proper relationship with your family. The third element and the third ingredient that makes a godly mother is a willingness to serve God. Now, in Luke 1 and verse 38, when Mary's told that she's going to give birth to a son and name him Jesus, and he would be the Messiah and the Savior of the world, Mary didn't panic Mary didn't, uh, didn't freak out. Mary simply in humility, with a steadfast heart in Luke 1 and 38, Mary said, Behold the maidservant of the Lord, let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. And in Deuteronomy chapter 10, verses 12 through 13, the Bible says, And now what does the Lord your God require of you? But to fear the Lord your God, to walk in all his ways, and to love him, to serve the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, and to keep the commandments of the Lord and his statutes, which I command you today for your good. You know, D.L. Moody, one of the great, great, great preachers of the, of, the, of the 19th and then 20th century, wrote of his childhood growing up these words. He said, my dad died when mother was 41 years old. What a struggle she had with us, six besides myself. And then the twins were born after my father's death. Only three books were in the place of our home, and yet they were enough. The family Bible, the catechism, and the book of family devotions. How the spruce log fire sparkled as we sat on the mat on a cold Sunday night when church was impossible. I can hear my mother now solemnly adjuring us to walk in the ways of the Lord as she read from the big Bible to us. After my father died, my mother wept herself to sleep every night. My sister said that to me. And yet we younger children who slept soundly in our blissful innocence never knew it. She was always cheerful to us, my brave old mom. Her motto was, give others the sunshine, tell Jesus the rest. D.L. Moody was a product of a godly praying mother. And he was the product of a mom that prayed and loved the Lord. I want to remind you that it is so true what the Word of God says. In Proverbs chapter 31, verse number 29 and verse 30, Many daughters have done well, but you excel them all. Charm is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman who fears the Lord, she shall be praised. 
To all the godly mothers that are out there, we honor you today and we say God bless you. And our prayer is for God to bless you and your family and the work of your hands and the labor of your life, whatever that may be. To the single mom out there that is raising children by herself, we pray God will bless you and strengthen and encourage you. To the grandmother that is having to raise her grandchildren, I pray and our prayer is that God will give you the wisdom and the patience and the mercy and the strength to be able to instill in your grandchildren the love of Christ and the things of God. And to moms everywhere, we pray for God to bless you, to bless your marriage, to bless your family, to bless you physically in your earthly life. We thank God for all of the mothers that are out there. We need godly mothers. We need women that have a relationship with Jesus Christ. We need women that have a good relationship with their children and their families. And we need women who will serve God faithfully. Because Jesus is returning soon. And he's coming back for a church that is a New Testament church, full of power, full of the glory of God, and about the Father's business fulfilling the Great Commission. And that takes men and women, boys and girls, laboring together for the cause of the kingdom. So today we honor all of our moms and we encourage everyone to follow the examples that we shared here in this message this morning. Make sure that you take time today to tell your mother that you love her, that you appreciate her. And for those that have lost their moms, that are spending Mother's Day without their mom, our prayers and our thoughts are with you. That God will encourage you, will strengthen you, and that you'll have memories and moments to recall that can give your heart, joy, and happiness for just a brief moment as we celebrate all of our moms on this Mother's Day. And I want to take a moment to wish my wonderful mother, Sharon, a happy Mother's Day. She is truly the rock of our family and the glue that holds our wonderful family together. And Mom, I love you so much. Happy Mother's Day to you and to all of our moms that are out there today. Join with me as we close in a word of prayer this morning. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this message that was shared today on this Mother's Day 2021. Father, we ask that you'll bless all of our moms everywhere. And Father, help us to take this message that we've heard this morning and to apply it to our own lives. Lord, help us to have a closer, deeper, personal relationship with you, Lord Jesus. Help us to have a good relationship with our families. And give us a heart, Lord, that will serve you and serve you faithfully. Father, we ask that you'll bless all of the families and moms and dads and families out there today. Lord, we pray this week that you'll give us a week of victory and blessing, that you will prosper and keep us in health, even as our soul prospers. And Father, we ask that you'll bring us back uh, this Wednesday at the appointed time for Wednesday of the Word. And we pray that you'll bring us back next Sunday as we worship together again in our online service. Now bless us, God, bless all of our moms today. And be with us, Lord, for we ask your blessings upon us in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank you again for joining with us and being a part of our special service this Mother's Day. We want to say again, Happy Mother's Day to all of our moms. Everyone have a wonderful week, and we'll see you all next time. God bless you.